So these are the Sony Alt Wear headphones and just like the rest of Sony's Alt lineup, Sony has been refining and improving all of their products. Now even though these headphones have an all new and much simpler name to them, these are actually the successors to both the Sony XP910N and the Sony XP900N. So if you're on the market for a pair of mid-tier ANC headphones or if you're thinking about upgrading from the Sony XP910N or the Sony XP900N, let's see what the Sony Alt Wear are all about. Regarding pricing, the Alt Wear have a retail price of $200. Not bad at all. However, these headphones are starting to go on sale now for $180. A solid pickup if you ask me. And these headphones are great for constant commuting on the bus, and I think these are amazing for the gym. Nonetheless, if you want to pick these headphones up, they'll be linked down below, or you can always press on the YouTube shopping button. And if you want to further support the channel, pick up a big head approved hat. Link down below. We've got trucker hats and snapbacks. By buying a hat, you help the unbiased and unsponsored videos coming, and it also helps us cover more products and produce more versus videos. Thank you to everyone who's already bought a hat, and look out for more designs coming soon. And also, please remember to hit that like button, and let's get subscribed. So first, let's talk about the included case. The Alt Wear come included with a decently small hard shell carrying case, and this case is going to have no problem keeping your headphones safe, even if you stuff them into a cramped backpack. Whereas the XB900N, these headphones come included with a carrying pouch. Not ideal. Now, the Alt Wear's case is the same size as the XB910N's case. However, the Alt Wear's case feels more premium because the fabric has a more textured feel to it, and this case is stiffer than the XB910N's be 910N's case. Overall, the Alt Wear come included with a great case that's great to travel with because it's small, much smaller than the XM5's case. It's much more in line with the XM4's case, Bose QC or Bose QC Ultra, and more importantly, it's a lot better than the sad excuse of a case that you get with the Beats Studio Pros or Beats Solo 4s. But with case out of the way, let's talk about the headphones themselves. Now, from a design and material standpoint, the Alt Wear are very different from both the XP9 910N and XP900N. Now, from a design standpoint, the Alt Wear have ear cups that pivot and swivel a lot, the headband clicks into place, and these headphones still have a fully collapsible design to them, which is why we have such a small case. Thankfully, it doesn't seem like Sony is going to continue down this path of lay flat headphones after all of the criticism that they got from the XM5s. But also, from a looks standpoint, the Alt Wear have a much subtler look to them compared to the XB910Ns whose headband is very bulbous. In the Alt Wear have returned to a more subtler look like the XB900N. But then there's the material differences here. The Alt Wear are now using recycled plastic, whereas the older headphones here are using new plastic. So the plastic body panels on the Alt Wear feels a little less dense than the plastic found on the XB910N and XB900N. Naturally, some people are going to feel concerned about the overall durability of these headphones, but given that I've been using these headphones for the last month and a half and I've had zero issues durability wise, and I have also had zero issues with the recycled plastics found on both the Watcha 720N and Sony XM5s, and both of these headphones are over a year old now. I don't expect durability to be an issue for the old wear. But also, there's the padding on these headphones. The leatherette on the Alt Wear feels very similar to the leatherette found on the XB910N, and it feels a lot better than the leatherette found on the XB900N. But the foam inside the ear patch on the Alt Wear is a lot stiffer than the foam found on the XB910N, and it's a lot stiffer than the foam found on the XB900N. So overall, when it comes to fit and comfort, the stiffer ear pads on the Alt Wear does a better job of creating a seal with your head. But also, since the foam on the Alt Wear is stiffer, that means that the amount of surface area coming in contact with your skin is less, which means the ear pads on the Alt Wear do a better job of staying cooler for longer than the ear pads found on both the XB910N and a much better job than the ear pads on the XB900N. And in general, the ear pads on the Alt Wear 
aware are, are a lot more spacious than the earpads found on the XB910N and XB900N. So if you have large ears or ears that stick out a lot, these should have no problem fitting you. But then there's the clamping force on these headphones. Just like before, the old to wear have a neutral amount of clamping force to them. They aren't too tight and they aren't too loose. And these are big head approved. And even if you have a big head and you like to wear a hat, these headphones will have you covered as well. And finally, there's the weight on these headphones. The old to wear weigh in at 255 grams, which is below average for a pair of premium ANC headphones. But the XB900N weigh in at 254 grams and and the XB910N weigh in at 252 grams. But honestly, you're not gonna notice this two or three gram difference. The important thing here is these headphones are very lightweight, so you aren't going to feel them shifting around when you're walking around with them on, and they're easy enough to forget that you're wearing them if you're sitting at your desk or laying in bed. But overall, from a design standpoint, the old wear keep their functional design because they're fully collapsible. I think they look a lot better than the XB910N because their headband isn't as bulbous, and when it comes to fit, the earpads stay cooler for longer, the earpads are a lot more spacious, these headphones are still lightweight, and they're still big head approved. So, the old to wear are a pair of headphones that you can easily wear for hours on end. But now let's talk about tech specs. Regarding battery life, the old to wear are the same as the XB910N. These headphones have an advertised battery life of 30 hours with their active noise cancellation turned on, or they can go for as long as 50 hours with their ANC turned off. Overall, battery life on these headphones is good and it's great for commuters or flyers, but I would have liked to have seen an increase in overall battery life performance with their active noise cancellation turned on. But when it comes to charging these headphones, they charge via a USB-C C port as they should and when it comes to their fast charging numbers if you were to charge these headphones up for 10 minutes from a dead battery they're gonna get you five hours of playback time not bad at all However, this USB-C port is strictly used for charging these headphones. Unfortunately, you cannot use the USB-C port on these headphones as a wired connection like you can with some other headphones out there. But thankfully, the Altwear still has a 3.5mm audio jack and they come included with an audio cable, so you can use them with a wired connection that way. And I know this sounds very basic, but I do have to point this out because there are some companies out there that are starting to remove the audio jack on their headphones as a cost-cutting measure, or they sell you the audio cable separately. But when it comes to Bluetooth connectivity, these headphones can be connected to any two Bluetooth devices at the same time regardless of ecosystem, which is good if you're a power user because you can easily hot swap from one device to another. So you can easily hot swap from your iPhone to your Windows PC. And when it comes to performance, these headphones have zero latency across the board when watching movies or videos on your phone, whether you're using an iPhone or an Android device. And when it comes to audio codecs, the old wear have support for SBC, AAC, and LDAC, which is Oni's own in-house high-res audio codec. However, if you want to use LDAC, you do have to be an Android user because iPhones top out at AAC. But also, if you do decide to use LDAC on these headphones, then these headphones are only going to be able to be connected to one device at a time. And also, LDAC does take an additional toll on the battery life. Because with these headphones, they have an advertised battery life of 30 hours with the active noise cancellation turned on, but that's when they're using a AC. Because if you're using LDAC, then your battery life is going to go down to 25 hours. But with all that out of the way, let's talk about sound. First off, the old wear no longer have as much head rattling bass as either the XB910N or XB900N. And for those who may not know, the XB900N actually have more bass than the XB910N. Now, the old wears still have a lot of bass, more bass than your normal pair of headphones, but I would no longer consider the old wear to be a pair of bass head headphones for those monster drinking, greasy haired, overstretched t shirt collar wearing bass sets. With Sony's new old lineup of speakers and headphones, Sony has really been focusing on improving the instrument separation and clarity of their sound. And even though their sound still has a lot of bass, it's mostly on the audible side now. Now, even though the old wear no longer has the same head rattling bass as either the XB910N or XB900N, if you were to set these headphones to old 2 and crank the clear bass up all the way up to 10, you're still going to get some 
physicality out of them. But the main upgrade on the Altware from either the XP910N and especially the XP900N is that they sound a lot more open, they have better clarity, and even if you were to use these headphones with their bass cranked all the way up, you're still going to manage to sound balanced and the vocals are going to be very well defined as well. And even though the bass on these headphones is mostly on the audible side now, it's extremely precise and tight and bass roll-off is not an issue whatsoever. So even if you have the bass on these headphones cranked up high, their bass doesn't muddy the rest of your sound. Personally, I like using these headphones when they're set to Alt 2 and I like cranking the clear bass all the way up. But you can always make these headphones sound however you want because you can just go in and either choose from a few pre-made EQs or you can make your own. But there's also the Alt button which has two levels to it. First, there's Alt 1 which is going to increase the bass of whatever EQ you're already using, but then there's Alt 2 which is going to increase the overall sound pressure of these headphones so everything is just going to sound more powerful, more intense mids and harder hitting bass. So overall, from a performance standpoint, the Alt wears sound a lot more open and they have much better clarity than their predecessors. And these headphones still have an above average amount of bass to them that's going to be a lot of fun for normal people and these have more than enough bass to satiate normal people. However, if you're a bass head, then these no longer have the head rattling bass that you're looking for. Now, when it comes to the meter controls on these headphones, just like before, and just like Sony's more premium ANC headphones, the Altware have a touchpad, and this touchpad is very accurate, and it's very easy to use. You can swipe front or back to skip through your music, and you can swipe up or down to raise or lower the volume of your music, and as a pro tip, if you swipe up and hold, you can continuously raise or lower the volume. Overall, the touchpad on these headphones is easy to use, however, there are some accidental inputs from time to time. But what is new here is that the Altware now have aware sensors. So when you take these headphones off, they'll automatically pause your music and when you put them back on, they'll start playing music again. Now, personally, I don't really care for wear sensors on my headphones, so you can turn them off if you want, but they're there if you want them. But now let's talk about the active noise cancellation on these headphones. Now, the Altware have a new V1 processor for their active noise cancellation and the active noise cancellation on the Altware block out a lot more noise than the ANC found on both the XP910N and XP900N. But so that you can see for yourself, we're going to go ahead and jump into an ANC test. So like we have just seen, the Altware block out a lot more noise than both the XP910N and XP900N, which is to be expected. Now even though the Altware have their new V1 processor, which is helping us block out more noise than its predecessor, this V1 processor does not have an atmospheric pressure sensor in it like with either the XM4s or XM5s. So even though I feel that the ANC on these headphones is going to be great for either blocking out noise at the gym or on the bus or in the cafeteria, if you plan on flying a lot with these headphones, they can help, but they aren't going to perform as well as Sony's more premium ANC headphones. But when it comes to overall cabin pressure on these headphones, that's not a problem, and the ANC on these headphones doesn't change how these headphones sound all that much. Overall, the Altware block out noticeably more noise than its predecessor, and their ANC is going to be useful for multiple situations. But also, there's the ambient mode on these headphones. Now, with the Altware, you can adjust how much noise these headphones let in, which is great. 
But my favorite thing about the ambient mode on the alt wear is that it sounds supernatural. I actually feel that the ambient mode on the alt wear sounds more natural than the ambient mode on the XM5s, and it almost sounds like you're not wearing headphones. Plus, I also really like the placement of the microphone array on these headphones because this microphone array does a really good job of rejecting any wind noise when you're walking outdoors. And finally, the ambient mode on these headphones is the active kind, meaning that if there's a sudden loud sound like a dog starts barking or if a police siren rolls by, then these headphones are going to automatically turn off their ambient mode and protect your hearing from just getting blasted like this. Just a major headphone warning. Morning. And then, when that loud noise stops, they'll turn their ambient mode back on. And the good thing about the active ambient mode on these headphones is that it's a lot more sensitive and it's faster to react than the active ambient mode found on both the XM4s and XM5s. But then, there's quick attention on these headphones, and basically, when you cover the touchpad, they'll automatically lower the volume of your music and pump in all of the ambient sound around you so that you can quickly talk to someone without having to fully remove your headphones like this. Yes. And then when you let go, the headphones will go back to normal again. Now, I love when headphones have this type of feature because it is very useful, especially if you're traveling or commuting with these headphones. But I don't like that you have to constantly have the touchpad covered because this does become uncomfortable and awkward after a while. I feel that Sony should change it so that when you have the touchpad fully covered for like, let's say five seconds, the headphones will lock themselves in quick attention mode. And then this way you can just let go and then you have both of your hands free and then when you're finished having that conversation you can deactivate quick attention by simply tapping on the touchpad regardless even though i think quick attention can be improved it's still a great feature to have especially if you plan on flying with these headphones but finally, here's the microphone test. Now, Sony has always struggled with their microphone on their headphones. But with their last few headphones, Sony has been improving. And right now, I feel that the Sony 1000XM5s have the best sounding and best performing microphone out there for phone calls. And I feel that the microphone on the Sony Old Wear sounds better than the microphone on both the XB910N and XB900N while in a quiet room. However, when it comes to noise pollution, the old wear aren't doing the best job here because even though they are trying to block out this road noise, there is a considerable amount of interference going on with my voice. Because I feel that the XB910Ns have the same amount of interference when it comes to blocking out this road noise. Whereas with the XB900N, these aren't even trying to block out this road noise, they just let in everything. And it's the same thing when it comes to black and white chatter. These headphones are just letting in everything and my voice just sounds a little far away. Whereas with the XP 19 ends, these are trying to block out this chatter, but there is some interference from my voice. And it's the same thing with the old wear. They are also trying to block out this chatter, but there is some interference going on with the voice. So overall, I do feel that the microphone on the Sony old wear sounds better than the microphone on both the XP 910 and XP 900 but I would rather take phone calls with these headphones while in but with all that being said, the Sony Altwear is a refinement and improvement of Sony's mid-tier ANC headphones. From a design standpoint, I like that Sony has gone back to a more subtle design similar to the Sony XB900N, and it has kept its fully collapsible design, which gives us access to a smaller carrying case compared to lay-flat headphones. From a comfort standpoint, the Altwear have more spacious ear cups and the stiffer padding in these ear pads helps these earpads stay cooler for longer, making them more comfortable for longer as well. 
And from a performance standpoint, the Altware block out significantly more noise than both the XP900N and XP910N. Their ambient mode sounds a lot more natural, and their microphone array does a much better job of blocking out wind noise when walking outdoors. But then, there's their sound. The Altware sound a lot more open, and they have a lot better clarity than their predecessor. And they still have an above average amount of bass for a pair of headphones. But the bass on these headphones is now mostly on the audible side. Now you're still going to get some kick out of the bass on these headphones, but don't expect the head rattling bass that bass heads look for. Nonetheless, these headphones still have a lot of bass and they should make most people happy and more importantly, they do sound a lot better than their predecessors. If you made it this far, I guess you enjoyed the video, so hit the like button and get subscribed. If you want to pick any of the products up, they'll be linked down below. And if you want to further support the channel, check out the merch. I made some shirts and hoodies that look and feel great. And you know I can be very particular, so I'll only slap my name on something if I'm really proud of it.